Hey everybody, it's Gordon Majak here, back with another episode of Timeless Pop, Rock, and Soul. And today we are going to feature a song, just a cool song that I have always loved, by an artist who first scored big in the late 1970s with a great song. Then for many years it appeared that they were going to be a one-hit wonder, and then a full 10 years after their debut in 1978, up to 1988, this artist came back with another great song that's arguably even better than the big hit that launched their career. I will tell you who that is and what that is in just a second, unless you already peeked at the title of the video. You guys are pretty smart. Before we do that, please remember to like, subscribe, and comment below. Tell me what you think of this music. I love seeing your comments, and I love responding to your comments. Now, back in 1978, a song came on the radio that just knocked me out, and I wasn't the only one because it went on to be a really big hit. And that was a song, kind of a really cool little mid-tempo ballad called Fool If You Think It's Over by a brand new artist then named Chris Rhea. Now that was just a classic song back then in the summer of 1978, Fool If You Think It's Over. And if you know the 70s like I do and love it, you know the song without me even playing it. What a great tune by Chris Rhea. He followed that single and that album up with a series of other albums and singles, and for various reasons, nothing that Chris Rhea did for many years after that initial success of Fool If You Think It's Over, nothing else really landed. Now, Chris Rhea, also it should be said, uh, was, a, was a certainly a, an eclectic artist in his own right, and for a variety of personal and professional reasons, was unwilling to really uh, compromise a lot in his career. Kudos to Chris for that, for holding the line with his music and with his art. And so it could be said fairly that Chris Rhea could have been even perhaps a bigger star uh, than he was on the basis of that first big hit if he had been willing to make some other changes and other compromises in his career, but he was not willing to do so. So we fast forward to 1986, and Chris Rhea releases an album called On the Beach, which has a song on it called On the Beach. And again, had some potential, but just didn't, the sound was not really coming together, at least to my ears, and I, and I loved his earlier stuff. Fast forward two more years, now we're up to 1988, and it's been 10 years since Chris Rhea got his big start there with Fool If You Think It's Over. 1988, and Chris Rhea releases a career retrospective album. You might call it a greatest hits kind of album, the best of Chris Rhea, that kind of a thing. And for the occasion of the 10-year anniversary of his splashdown there, he decides to re-record several songs from his career, from earlier in his career. He re-recorded Fool If You Think It's Over, as a matter of fact. Uh, the remake, not as good as the original, in my humble opinion. He also remade that other song that I mentioned called On The Beach from just two years previous. The, the On The Beach album came out in 86. That's the original version of the song, and just two years later, uh, for some unknown reason, Chris decided that that needed a remake, and he redid the whole thing. And, oh my goodness, you thought Fool If You Think It's Over was good. Wait till you hear his redone version of On the Beach, all six minutes and 50 seconds of it. And this is a masterpiece recording by Chris Rhea. And it also turns out that on this updated version, Chris Rhea, it appears, to the best of my ability to discern from the album credits, it appears to me that Chris Rhea is playing all of the instruments. So we have lead vocals, instrumentation, production, writing. Chris Rhea is doing it all on this one. And when I first heard this record there in... Uh, late summer, early fall of 1988 off of that Greatest Hits album, um, I couldn't figure out how I had missed this song the first time around. So I went back a couple years to the original On the Beach album 
And I realized why I had never heard it or any ever even knew about it was because it, like I said, the potential for the song was there, but it wasn't it wasn't coming out in that version. And I could hear in an instant why the updated revised version, which we're going to hear from 1988, was so much better. And I can hear exactly why Chris Rea thought he needed to redo it in the first place. And he was right. And wait till you hear this record. And that was a time there in the mid-late 80s when a number of artists including Chris Rhea and others like Basha and Sade to a degree and everything but the girl and some artists like that were exploring this musical territory that was sort of a blend between pop and jazz and there were acoustic elements to it and a little bit of soul in there. And it was really sort of a, a cool little genre blending that was going on there uh, in the 80s. And Chris Rhea was right in the middle of it. And I'm not sure Hearing this song again, like I've been listening to it lately, I'm not sure anybody captured the essence and that vibe, uh, not just of those times, but of that sound, that, that little exploration that was going on then between pop and jazz and soul. Uh, Chris Rhea, he nailed it, as you'll hear here in one second. On the Beach from the summer of 1988, the album was called New Light Through Old Windows, hence the remakes of some of his old songs. Uh, Chris Rhea took this record all the way up to number nine on the adult contemporary chart, number 12 in the UK. And it was inspired, Chris Rhea says, by the Spanish island, and I'm going to screw up this name, Formentera, which is off the coast of Ibiza. Not sure where that is, but if it's anything like this song, I wouldn't mind checking it out. From 1988, this is Chris Rhea and his remake of his own song from 1986, On the Beach. Listen to the sound.
this is the point where the single version of this song would start to fade out. Bummer. Do you really want it to fade out here? Hell no. Wait till you hear what the full-length album version sounds like and where Chris Rhea takes this gorgeous song. This is how it was intended to be heard. That's called bringing your vision to life. And I sure wish I could talk to Chris Rhea because I would love to know uh, how he went from the original version of that song in 1986, which is very different, and in my opinion, not nearly as good as this one. I'd love to know how he went from that original version just two years later into this version. And, and this thing to me is just amazing. That instrumentation and the electric piano and the guitar, all those jazzy guitar licks and the percussion. I mean, this is the whole package. And I have to say that, you know, loving Fool If You Think It's Over, as I did way back there in the 70s, and that was all, always one of my favorite 70s songs, uh, loving that as I did, it really was too bad, I thought, that Chris Rhea had never followed that up with anything uh, equally worthy in my eyes, at least, to that point. But boy, he sure blew me away with this one there in the summer of 1988. It is the great Chris Rhea and On the Beach. And as I mentioned, Chris says that was inspired by the Spanish island Formentera, which is off the coast of Ibiza. And apparently that is where Chris and his wife uh, sort of fell in love and uh, 
ended up getting married eventually. So a very romantic, beautiful story there behind the song, and you can sure feel the passion and the personal connection in the music for Chris Rhea because uh, that was a pretty dynamite piece of music there. And of course, as I said, it appears to me from the credits that he's playing uh, most, if not all, of the instruments. So Chris Rhea regarded as a pretty fair blues guitarist uh, in his own right and getting off some nice uh, jazzy guitar licks on this remake of On the Beach from 1988, Chris Rhea. Now we are going to jump up just about one year, maybe a year and a half for this next song and sort of finish off this little uh, three song set here of this kind of jazzy pop from the mid late 80s. And uh, the next segue is gonna be a great one just like this one. A really nice segue out of Captain of Her Heart, wouldn't you say? I thought so. See you in the next one. And now. <laughs> 